Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts Lucy Davis and Benjamin Holden. So today we are joined by a very special guest who is an IFBB Pro Bodybuilder, a Guinness World Record holder and a YouTube sensation with over 1.52 million subs. 1.520 million. Big number. I can't even say that many numbers. No, I know. That's insane. He's very much known for his non-bullshit approach and his call-out culture of his natty or not. It is Mr. Greg Doucette. He is also a published author. Yeah. We've we've been waiting to get a guest on for a while now to talk about the the, the subject of both anabolic steroid use mm-hmm. and testosterone replacement therapy. We've had a lot of questions from guests on this topic. And would you believe with all the topics we've already covered, we haven't delved yet into this one? It is such an interesting topic, and I'm so glad we had Greg on to talk about it. Today's podcast is sponsored by Coro, who are our long-term sponsor on the podcast. Literally before I was saying to Ben, I had my granola and these new little chocolate things, you know, the salted caramel ones. Yes. Oh. The chocolate slabs. Oh, I mean, they're probably melted in this heat, This, I is, this is why we haven't got any on today's podcast, by the way, because we are recording on the hottest day of the <laughs> you year. You see the beads of sweat running off? No, but literally, they are literally phenomenal and we love them very much. The link is below if you want to shop them and the code is not so fit 5 Enjoy the podcast. So the first thing, we're going to put you to the test a little bit. With your YouTube videos, you do a lot of natty or nots. And I as a woman in fitness with muscles, quite a lot of muscles coming from a sporting background, probably every single day, someone will say that I'm on steroids to have the physique that I have. So we were gonna say, if you go on my Instagram now, so if you just type in Lucy Davis fit, and then a live- Live natty or not. A live natty or not. The metrics would be never looking at a photo unless you'd be ridiculous. Like like just picking any photo, There's no way I would be like, unless you were so freaky, like amazing, I'd be like, well, come on. But like, uh, you cannot tell by just looking at someone just regular and saying, yeah, not natural. The metric would be comparing. So I would spend a long time. So like to do a natty or not, like when I do them on, on anyone, it's never like I can spend two minutes. I look at it and I talk to other people and we discuss it and we go through like the progress. So what I really look for is, Is there a moment in time that the gains from one to the next don't make sense? So, because if you have really amazing genetics, you could be, for example, at 12 looking freaky and then 13, 14, like every year, just keep looking better. And so I would never see a a period of time that wouldn't make sense. But if you train for five years and you were all right, look pretty good, then all of a sudden you look really good. Be like, okay, I can see that at that point there was something that happened. So I'm just looking... It's not loading very quick, but I can see you're running here. So my guess is people think that you're not natural because of your abdominals, because they're so lean. Like you just finished, I'm like watching this and you basically just ran up and you could see your abs really defined. And so for women, most people say, if you see abs, like really like chiseled abs, like really good genetic abs, that they're going to say, oh, you're not natural. It's just, it's the way it is for women. Most of the time, that's what it is. I mean. To look at your body, if it's like, if you had said you got this in a year, I'd say, well, you're not natural. But if you train for a long time, then I would say, well, why not? So it all depends. Like, are are we going to see a a crazy change from one photo to the next? So these photos, what just stands out is abs all the time. Yeah. And so if you gained a little bit of body fat and didn't have the abs or you had bad ab genetics, because like some people don't have abs. Like when my girlfriend dieted down for powerlifting, she had to cut to like 132. She was really strong. She could barely see abs at all, no matter how lean she got. She had striated chest muscles and everything, but not abs. So it doesn't give you that look of like, you know, being really impressive with a physique. But girls that have like really strong abs, and it's the same for men too. Look at the Liver King's abs and stuff. Yeah. Like it just like stands out. And so that's that's what I would look at. So yeah, like all these photos what I see is abs. So it makes you look not natural to the average person. But to me, it doesn't at all because abs are mostly genetic. And if your body fat levels are low enough. And so to to do a natty or not, like I haven't seen any progress. Like I'd have to go back to, I don't know. I'd have to, like, I don't have time really. I'd have to scroll back to five years ago. I don't know how many photos you have. Then I would have to (laughs) analyze each year. And it would take like, I don't know, I usually spend like an hour going through really an hour. I'm like, 
especially when they have a weight listed in. So it says, you know, I'm 120 here in a certain look, then 130 and then 120. And I've done that or not on girls. And I'm like, you're not natural. And I was like the whole time thinking they were. And yeah. then I'll find four years ago where they're like, they gained a lot of muscle, then they lost it. I'm like, that was a cycle. And that's when they stopped the cycle. And it could have been anything, Anabar or whatever. And I'm like, that's exactly what happened. And they're thinking, well, I only put on 10 pounds of muscle in the last five years. I'm That's natural. I'm like, yeah, but you put on 10 pounds in six months and then you lost it then you put it and you keep cycling back and forth yeah because even for most people like you can train all year round you can diet from fucking tubware all year round do your cardio and be lucky to put a couple of pounds on per year especially as a trained athlete as well yeah absolutely it's it's very difficult especially um after you've been training for a while as you just said trained athletes it's harder to put on more muscle but when you're a newbie or if you had to take some time off or anyone that enters those before and after transformation contests, what you'll see is people that used to be jacked, like say, take me, take me, for example, if I took a year off the gym and stopped training and then took a before picture and then joined the gym again in an after photo in three months, you'd be like, there's no way you did it without whatever drug cycle. And it'd be like, well, you're just getting back to the size that you once had. So that's, that's a, that's a big difference. Or if you just join the gym, you've never trained in your life, you're going to see a lot of gains. That's, that's a lot of like an, an easy time to put on a lot of muscle. Yeah. A big, to- a big topic that seems to be popular at the moment. I know that you spoke about it before, Greg, and it was one of the questions that we had from some of our listeners for this podcast today was around um, TRT. Would you just mind giving our listeners a quick kind of rundown of exactly what that is? Well, TRT stands for testosterone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. We also call it HRT, which is like hormone replacement therapy and testosterone is a hormone. And it's given to both men and women. So a lot of people don't realize that. They think it's just a guy thing, but women have testosterone, men have testosterone. Men on average have 12 times more testosterone than women. So there's plenty of women, I know several who are on HRT. It's just at a dose of around 10 milligrams a week or so for, for a female. In comparison, my dose, I'm on HRT, is 140 milligrams, which is actually a fair bit but it's individual dependent on 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 where your testosterone levels are at so anyone that's given testosterone our bodies use it in a different way some people you can give them a little bit of testosterone and it works really well other people they need a little bit more and so based on your blood work a doctor can decide what your dose should be at so when I was at 100 milligrams my testosterone levels were still you know a little bit on the lower side and at 140 it's right where the doctor wants it to be now if I took 200 I would feel better, I would be bigger, my testosterone levels would be even higher, but the higher the dose, the more dangers that it offers, the more side effects, the more potential problems it could give. So what you should do with HRT is take the lowest dose that is enough to give you the results that you need. And so physically, mentally, sexually, everything for me at that dose, I feel amazing. Now, there's no reason to do more. So if the doctor were to prescribe me more at this point, he would be doing me a disservice because why would the doctor prescribe me medication that can hurt me? Because testosterone is not safe per se. Lower doses, it's safer than higher doses. So when I used to take steroids back in the day, I could take two or 3,000 milligrams of not just testosterone, but various forms of steroids. So that's dangerous, very dangerous. And the, the more you take, the worse it is. So now I'm done with taking these cycles. I'm just on HRT, which just gives you your body, the testosterone that needs to function at a normal level. So um, as you age, a lot of times people will have declining testosterone levels, both men and women. And so with testosterone, it can kind of give you that feeling you had when you're in your 20s. For example, you feel uh, more energy, you sleep better, better sex drive, mood, energy, all these different things. And so testosterone replacement therapy for many people, it's a lifesaver. A lot of people are depressed. They think they're, they need Prozac or something like some kind of, you know, mood enhancers. And it's like, they're just low on testosterone. They just don't feel like themselves. And with HRT it can help you to feel young again, essentially. Yeah, so a recent interview with Dorian Yates was talking about some of the advantages to do with like depression. Um, he was talking about a lot of the the heart heart diseases. I think he was quoting something from the book The Ageless Man and a lot of the positive effects it has with arthritis, diabetes, depression. I've been looking around it quite a lot at the moment because through especially a lot of my younger years and through when I was going on lads' holidays and I just wanted to go and get laid. Sorry, Lucy. Um, it's before we were together. Yeah, it's before we were together. Um, I used to take big doses of steroids and just blast them and then come off and not do any kind of PCT. And it was only over the recent years when I went to go go and get bloods done 
some of my hormone levels were, were pretty low and I've been doing a lot of more research around TRT at the moment and listen to people talk about it. But I think there's still a bit of confusion within side fit, the fitness industry and potentially not enough people still talking about it because I was even listening to, I don't know if you saw it the other day, it was the Joe Rogan Hoobman podcast. And I think even Joe Rogan was confused about the dose that he was actually taking because they were talking about the like sports TRT dose and the actual TRT dose and they were talking about the actual mills and the CLs on the syringe. And I think Joe Rogan was like, that, wow, it's so much 30, 40 meg per injection. And then when they broke it down, that's how much Joe was actually taking. Um, so I think there's still a lot of confusion. What What's your stance when you're hearing people talking about, well, I'm still natural doing TRT? There seems to be like this middle ground where people will use it as like, I'm still natural, but doing TRT because I'm not taking massive amounts of gear. Well, first of all, it's shocking to know how much people are don't, it's shocking to see how much little people know about these things. Like yeah. Joe Rogan, I watched it and I'm like, he's talking about how many CCs they're doing. And I'm like, yeah. that's irrelevant yeah, to CCs. Yeah. It's how many milligrams per mil. So if it's dosed at 200 per mil or 100 per mil, you'd have to do double the dose at yeah. 100 versus 200. And there's been people that have come out and that they've switched their dose from something that had 200 to 100 and they kept injecting the same volume. And so they were on half the amount. And so that's gonna make a huge difference. And people in general, even people who abuse steroids, they don't know. I'll say, what are you on? I'm on three cc's of test. Well, what kind of test? I don't know. Is it probe, an enthate, short ester, long ester, 100 per mil, 300 per mil? Like, so people are injecting and have no idea what they're putting into their body. So mm -hmm. that's really scary. Um, and what was the other part of the question? You There's like a middle ground where people um, will use TRT almost like as a, a bit of like a scapegoat, so I'm natural because I'm using TRT. Oh, I'm not is taking it natural doses. or not? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you're taking something, injecting something exogenous from outside the body and putting it into the body that wasn't there, you're not natural. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. So there's no way that I'm technically natural at this point, even though I'm on a prescription from the doctor. Because I'm taking in something that's making me normal, but I'm getting that normal feeling by some other injection. It would be like if I was to inject growth hormone into my body at the age of 11 and grow six inches taller, I'm artificially making myself taller, even though I'm a short guy to start with that made me get taller by kind of, I guess you could call it cheating in a way because it's not, you weren't meant to be that tall. So I'm not, you know, if you're, if you, even if you have low testosterone levels, if you're taking it from outside the body, you're not meant to have that. It's, it's, it would be nice if you did, but you don't have it. So it's not natural, it's, it's unnatural. You're giving your body what you're supposed to have, but you're doing so in an unnatural yeah. way, if you know what I mean. I, I feel like I'm, I'm just not very clued up on the topic in general, and I'll, I'll admit to that. Is TRT not classed as a steroid? Is it not in that you still, it's just same a, it bracket? Is just it is classed as a steroid, but it's not the same as taking, what was the trend, Balon? That's completely different. Trend. Yeah, so it's not the same as that, is it? It's no. a different kind of category, which is this one you can be prescribed so what it is, is there's anabolic androgenic steroids. There's mm -hmm. a bunch, there's dozens of them. And the doctors pick one of those drugs and they inject you with that at a dose that p causes you to be within this normal range. So not too much, and not too little to allow you to be in a normal range. There's other drugs, but the body doesn't make those like trenbolone acetate or an enthate or uh. nandrolone or equipoise or t-ball or anadrol, d-ball. There's so many different steroids out there. They all cause muscles to get bigger. They're all going to like increase your, your, they can cause you to be more androgenic. So they do technically similar things to what steroids do. Like they just make you get bigger faster mm -hmm. or make you have a deeper voice, that kind of things for women. But um, the doctors will single out testosterone because that's what the body is producing. Yeah. Oh. The re the reason why we, we wanted to bring you on today as well, Greg, to talk about this topic is because I think we were looking at some of the stats, especially for the US in terms of there's as many as 3 million US adults taking steroids, there's 15 to 30% of gym users admitting taking to steroids, which I'm sure is probably higher if people were, were telling the truth. Um, and do you think that we are heading into a more positive space in terms of it being less underground and being spoken about more, especially for like your channels, more play to more dates, people like that being more open about these topics. 
I think that in years to come, people will look back and be like, I can't believe people judged people who are on HRT so poorly or so harshly. Yeah. It's in the same sense as how many women do we know who are on birth control? Like yeah. for the majority of the women that I know have taken birth control at some point in their life and no one has judged them and saying, you're some form of a cheater. You're taking estrogen. This is like, or progesterone. Like you're, you're taking these hormones. It's, it's a way to just change your body so that you don't get pregnant essentially. We don't see that as a horrible thing. We also have women, how many women do we know have breast implants? And we mm -hmm. don't see that as a horrible thing or Botox. But what about ab implants? People are kind of against that or Brazilian butt lifts or ass implants. People see that more negatively. But a nose job, it's not so bad. So over time, the longer we allow something or the more it's out there, the more people become accepting of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's with anything. At first, people are so far against it, but you then get used to it and it seems okay. And so in time, I think that people will adjust to it and they'll believe that HRT, it's a doctor prescribed thing. It's a medical thing. And so they won't be so quick to judge because there's so many people, men, women in their forties, fifties that are on HRT. They don't tell anyone mm -hmm. they're at the gym. They don't tell they, you, you could never tell. It's not like yeah. they look like Hercules. And so they don't want to say anything because as soon as they say it, they're like, oh, you're a cheater. You only look like that because of your HRT. Mm -hmm. So people don't want to admit what they're taking because they're kind of made fun of. But yeah. in the future, I think that'll go away. I mean, that's a difficult topic to talk about, I think, because there's, there's different ways, I think, for especially a lot of people who potentially have positions of authority or positions of status where, like, what is the right way for people to approach it? Because for me, like, I think either pe should people should address it and talk about it or people should just try and move away from the subject. I think completely denying it then gives a, a false sense of security to people, especially if people look up, look up to those people and aspire to be to them. I mean, I don't know if you saw the, literally the article from two days ago, which was, uh, I think it was in Muscle and Fitness. It was the, the Rock's new interview talking about his steroid free success. I don't know, have you saw that one yet? I have not. Yeah. He's actually got a video where he's talking it, about it was, a, it, was a, it was an interview with Muscle Fitness. Yeah, I would cover that. Yeah, it was an interview with Muscle Fitness two days ago. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not negating any of his hard work or success that he's he's come up with. But he explained in the interview that he's not touched stuff since he was uh, 18 to 19, I think he said. He said, me and my buddies tried it back in the day when I was 18, 19. We didn't really know what we're doing. But since then... We, I haven't touched anything or would never admit to doing anything. Do you think for people like The Rock, like who's a real pinnacle of this kind of debate, do you think it'd be, it'd do more good or more harm if someone like that was to really open up and talk about the topic? I always think that honesty is the best policy and I think that it would do way more good if The Rock came out and said like, this is what he's actually done throughout his life because I mean, unless we're living under a rock, well, speaking of the rock, <laughs> then is there any way that you could actually think that he looks the way he does in his 50s? 100% natural, not even on HRT. Like, why wouldn't he be on HRT? So, for example, when you diet down really hard, your testosterone levels, they plummet. So anyone that goes from being, say, you know, 15% body fat down to single digit body fat, they're on a cutting diet. He's a movie actor. He's in his 50s. He's going to have lower testosterone levels. And so it would be very beneficial for him to be on HRT, probably more so than not being on HRT at his age to cut to that level. So why would he not be on it? It's like, it, I can't even imagine the situation where he would say, I refuse to do HRT. Yeah. Like, why would he do that? Because it, like, I'm on HRT. I feel better with it than without it. I could go off of HRT and I could live a life. It wouldn't be as good. But why would I choose to do that when I feel better on it? And so if he were to admit what he's doing, People would say, oh, The Rock does it. We like The Rock. He's a nice guy. And so it would make it more acceptable for the regular person. When really famous people come out and are open about things, people are more accepting. I remember Ellen DeGeneres came out and says, I'm, I'm gay. I'm lesbian. Yeah. And it's like somebody's so famous. And so back decades ago, and I'm more, I'm a bit older than you two, people were not very like, if you were gay, it was hard to come out and be open about it. It's like you kept it secret. Most people were secretive about it, especially hundreds of years if you go way back. But today, way more accepting, way more accepting because more people come out and are open and honest and discuss it. And so you're like, wow, there's my hero over there. They admit to it. it I'm okay. I'm normal. So if The Rock were to say, you know, I've been on HRT all this time and I didn't admit it because I was scared that people wouldn't watch my movies and I thought people would make fun of me. 
other people, they're in their 40s or whatever, be like, The Rock just did it. And then they would go to their wife and say, Do you know what? Wife, I'm on HRT and I didn't want to tell you because I thought you'd make fun of me. But like my Rock, the, the Rock came out and he admitted to it. So it's okay. And so I think it would help a ton of people if somebody like that came out and said, mm -hmm. You know, I take this. I mean, I think a lot of people are still quite naive to the fact that people like The Rock will be taking. Like, what did you say this morning when we talked about it? <laughs> He's Samoan. So that, yeah. So he must. No, uh, yeah. So I'll give you a bit of, because we were going to talk about this. I'll give you a little bit of background in terms of how I grew up. So I grew up as a full time competitive swimmer. And from the age of 14, we were drug tested in terms of we had this 100% me scheme. We had to pee in pots. They were sent off to labs. We couldn't have certain things like certain Sudafeds or Lempsips. And. So those like Olympic sports, it was drilled into me from like a really, really young age. And so this is why I said about the TRT thing, because I understand TRT and I do understand that. But then it's, so like the Tour de France, for example, people are doping in that sport. And I cannot not see that as like pure cheating with those Olympic sports, which is why I think I am a little bit naive to thinking, oh no, like the rock wouldn't be on steroids when, I mean, he is the size of a house. So I'm probably one of those people where I've had to learn about the fitness industry. And that side of it. yeah, that side of it and more so detach from being the swimmer that I was when I was drug tested and it was really strict. But what is your take on those sort of sports? So the Olympians who have had medals stripped and everything like that because they were doping or because they were found taking steroids like what's your kind of stance on on that the first time i ever heard about a steroid in my life i was in grade eight i would have been about 13 it was at the olympics ben johnson had yeah. just won the 100 meter dash was the coolest guy ever he had the hand in the air winning the before he even got to the line it was like wow this is amazing and a few days later our national hero winning the 100 meter gold medal was stripped from his for, for taking steroids. And that's the first time I heard of this. And I'm like, what is this steroid thing? And our school teachers would be like, oh, it's just a shortcut. You can get there with hard work if you don't, it, without steroids, It's it just takes you longer. And I'm like, uh oh, so it's just cheating to get there because he didn't want to like train hard. And I'm getting older and older and I'm like thinking, okay, steroids, um, you know, it's just a way of cheating. It can give you uh, brain cancer. Lyle Alzado, this famous football player and actor, he had, he was this famous back in the time. And I'm like, he was on steroids and he was like, don't do it. He got brain cancer from it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it can, mm. it can kill you this thing. Like, but, and it's just a shortcut. And so you can do it without it. And then I got to university and I started studying and I'm like, wait a minute, steroids actually work. They're mm. not, it's not just some shortcut. It actually gives you a huge advantage and that you couldn't get there just through hard work that you wouldn't be able to do with the steroids. So I was like, this actually works. And so as you get older, you realize that it is obviously cheating. It is, but if your sport allows it, then it's not cheating. Like if anything goes, anything goes. So certain sports like in the Olympics, if you're taking steroids, you're obviously cheating because the other people are not allowed to do it. Now the problem becomes if you're in a sport where you know that everyone is cheating and you don't cheat and you can't win, then are you in fact cheating if you know that everyone else is cheating? So if you were to enter an arm wrestling competition and they said you're not allowed to take steroids, it's on the honor system. We're not going to test you. It's on the honor system. You can't take steroids. And your the opponent you're going at says to you, I'm taking steroids. And you're like, really? And then if you decide to take steroids to compete against that guy, are you cheating? Because you know that guy's cheating. So in the Tour de France, for example, all the riders that were at the top were taking T either testosterone or blood doping mm -hmm. for example they take out your blood and inject it right before the race and you have extra mm -hmm. red blood cells so as a swimmer they were doing that in the olympics as well there's certain countries and they're breaking records as teenagers they're giving them extra blood cells and they can pass and so is it cheating if you know that everyone else is doing it and so that would be the debate and i'm not here to say it is or not yeah. but it can be highly debatable like if you knew every single person was taking steroids it, would you feel like you're cheating? So like when I first started taking steroids for bodybuilding, they weren't drug testing. And I'm like, I was so against it. Like as a, in my, you know, teens and twenties, I would never take that. But then I'm winning every competition. I'm winning national championships, natural, hundred percent natural. And then I'm like, well, I want a pro card. They don't give you a pro card unless you go into the non-tested category. And then you have to win. I'm like, well, how am I going to win? 
And then when you go to this competition, there's no drug testing and no one says you can't take anything. They just kind of say, well, it's bodybuilding. You could compete. And so when I took steroids, it did not feel like I was cheating at all because everyone else was taking. And not by say everyone else, probably only 95%, all the ones who are winning. Mm -hmm. And so it's debatable. Like you feel like a, a cheater. Like as an IFBB pro, they're not drug testing you. We sign a piece of paper and it says you can't take steroids. We can drug test you at any time, but they never will. Mm -hmm. And so all the Mr. Olympia competitors and whatnot, they're all taking steroids, but I don't know. I don't think they feel like they're cheating because it's allowed in that sport, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I think I think people would be super surprised at the amount of people that actually are taking gear, whether that's in the fitness industry or whether that's in athletic sport as well. I think, like we are saying this morning, a lot of people are quite naive to the fact that the amount of people that are actually using and hiding and getting away with the fact that they're doing stuff. Like, imagine if we eventually had something where... The Olympic Olympians were allowed to take steroids. Like you'd have the hop, skip, and where the fuck's he gone? Because people would just be <laughs> breaking records all over the place. Like it'd be, it'd be quite entertaining. Obviously, it wouldn't be ethical, but I think people would be surprised about the amount of people that are actually using gear and different things. And we had um, Matt does fitness on a, a few months ago talking about a topic which is is similar again when it comes to uh, I suppose hiding or not talking about the fact that people are using certain substances and talking about contracts because there's a lot of people in sport and in fitness who are literally paid to look a certain way but then contracted not to talk about those those or contracted not to take yeah well, hollywood well, actors the rock yeah. All yeah. those actors cannot come out and say it because it would tank their movie. Imagine if Thor says, yeah, I inject this much test and trend each delt every day and I yeah. put this into my biceps and the movie would flop perhaps. Yeah. Thor would, the, it would cost them probably $100 million. Their mm -hmm. parents would be like, well, I'm not going to bring you this. Like it's a movie of drugs. Like yeah. they can't, they can't say it. And so can you blame mm -hmm. the actor who's paid $20 million to, to, to not talk about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, then that filters down to supplement companies who are for example i had in a contract years ago that you aren't allowed to talk about uh sport enhancing drugs didn't say you couldn't take them just said you weren't allowed to actively talk about them and i mean from contracts that i've seen more recently that doesn't seem to be the case as much as people are becoming more open to the fact but obviously for a lot of supplement companies they don't want the athlete saying well this is the way that you look because you're using sport enhancing drugs we're saying you look this way because you're using our product and i suppose that's a vicious cycle that then athletes are gonna play down the fact that they are using stuff because then they're stuck into this contract where they're potentially getting paid thousands of pounds per month to not talk about it like how do how do you break that vicious cycle well i lost my contract i turned pro and when it was known that i was on um on steroids and had pr trouble with steroids I lost my contract with Mutant. It was close to $20,000 a month back like 10 years ago. Really? And then, yeah. So I lost my contract. I, I, I was able to, I had it for like a month and then I lost it. And so looking back now, I bet they would have said, hmm, I wish we would have kept that guy <laughs> because later on I came out and I became popular on YouTube. And I'm sure with any supplement company would be more than happy to have me at this point. I mean, now I have my own company. Mm -hmm. And so I think that were myself and other people came out and, and admitted like what they've taken and just were honest rather than lying all the time. And people respect honesty. I think people like it that you're actually admitting things. Like if you got in trouble or you did something, you're like, look, I did this, I made these mistakes. No one's perfect. I'm not gonna lie. Versus other people, Mike O'Hearn, The Rock, they're 100% natural. I mean, are they really? So I think people would rather listen to people who are admitting what they're doing and are honest about it because who in what person on this earth is perfect? Like we yeah. all make mistakes, whether people know about it or not. It's just when you're in the spotlight, someone like myself, everyone knows about every mistake you made in your entire life. And so it's better to just admit to it and be honest about it. And I think people can relate because who isn't, who's, who's perfect out there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you actually, you just mentioned it then, when you were first honest and open about it, was that quite a hard decision to come to? Like, were you quite nervous to open up about it or were you just a bit like, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest and just, and tell people? I, not really, because I, I said when I take steroids, because I kind of planned out that I was going to, I was like, you're gonna know 
that I'm doing it. Once you see, I remember I wrote something like, once I, once you see me bench pressing three plates for 30 reps, you'll know that I'm <laughs> on steroids. And I was like, I just benched three plates for 32 reps. And then it was the comments were like, well, you must be on steroids. And it was like, it was so obvious, but yeah. um, I think it's, it's hard, but like, if you are going to be a bodybuilder, if people wouldn't talk about it so much, but everyone just knew. Like if you're competing at the national championships to try to win an IFBB pro card, it's automatically known that you're on steroids. It's like, it's, it's like you don't have to admit, it's almost like you don't even have to talk about it. Like unless you adamantly say, I'm natural, it's assumed that you're not. Mm -hmm. It's more like saying that. It's like, it's like entering a bike race and, and saying you used a bike. I don't have to say I used a bike in the bike race. I entered the race, obviously I had a bike. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's that obvious that anyone that's yeah. trying to be an IPB pro bodybuilder is not natural. Like it's that obvious. I, I don't think that's as much of an issue. Like if people just aren't addressing it, it's the fact that when people are genuinely saying, I am not, like the, the absolute pinnacle of what we've been talking about is someone like the Liver King who runs a supplement company and runs businesses and it's based off the way that he looks and the way that his living is. And the fact that then he just talks about actively never taking or touching gear, which is... I think the biggest skew of perception. Yeah, he, to me, he's like Michael Michael Hearn, who I literally just watched an interview where he's saying, "Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm natural my whole life. My I have low testosterone. In fact, I only have 400 nanograms per deciliter. So his testosterone levels are on the low end his whole life. Imagine yeah. being that big and saying, "Yeah, I have low test." Yeah. So he's like, he he won't even admit to taking HRT or anything, but he's like, "Yeah, I have low testosterone. I just work hard and I don't have good genetics." Like he just, I just watched this interview and I'm like, how can he say these things? Mm. But th again, that skews like a lot of young males' perceptions of what's really realistic. And, and then a lot of people will then look at themselves like they're the issue, like they're the problem, like they're not achieving this kind of perception of what fitness is. And they then look at themselves and blame themselves when it's not really anything about that. And I think that's, that's what I've got the big problem with anyways, because it then makes young males feel really inferior about their efforts and their results when there's a lot bigger part being played in the whole role. Yeah, we're on the same page because like the, one of the – like I get a lot of cri criticism for being open and saying you shouldn't talk about it. You're encouraging people to use it. By saying I'm on HRT or that I took steroids to look a certain way, you're encouraging its use. And I see it as the opposite. I see it as – I'm saying, look, I have amazing genetics. And they're like, oh, you're just bragging. I'm like, no, I'm taking away from me by saying I chose the right parents yeah. and I'm lucky. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have this physique. I couldn't have done it. I've worked hard, sure, but it's the genetics and all the drugs and all the things I've done that allowed me to look like this. Because for the most part, most people who take steroids, they don't look like they work out. Yeah. Like literally, I used to sell them. So think of who would know what people would look like. I'm selling steroids to my friends. They're married and whatnot, and they don't look like they work out and they're not telling their wives. And it's because they just want to look good. They just like, I just want to go to the beach and, and have the confidence to take my shirt off. I don't need abs or I just want to look like, okay. Yeah. And that's why they're taking steroids. But most people think steroids, you're going to be a pro. You're going to look huge. You're going to be Chris Bumstead or like, you're going to look like some freak. But most people, 90% who take steroids, they kind of look like average. They mm -hmm. don't look like really good. And so as soon as you take steroids and you admit to it, then they'll be like, you take steroids and that's all you look like. But that's like most people that take steroids don't look very good like it's just it's sad to say but most people don't look that amazing you take the average guy with their shirt off they're certainly not going to be an impressive specimen it's just we're brainwashed by you know instagram we get shown the hot 100 hottest looking women and men on our feeds every day with the best physiques and so we think that that's what most people look like but they certainly don't yeah 100 percent agree with that i think especially more recently obviously say for example your or all mom and dad's the only people that they would have really seen and had people to compare to would have been people that they saw down the lo local supermarket when they went for the food shop whereas now you just have unlimited access to the hyper elite at any at the touch of a fingertip um so i think that's a difficult one because comparison is going to be a massive point but one of the one of the points that you made then in terms of a lot of people who actually take steroids don't look that good i think especially for me when i was younger i just jumped on gear when i was like 17 18 because those guys in my gym who were doing it, I was going to quite like an an under school, uh, underground old school gym and I hadn't really pushed the limit with my training, with my nutrition, with my supplementation and ticked those boxes before I'd even tried it. 
and I know from some of the questions that we've had from listeners today, a lot of them are asking questions about like considering it or doing it. Like, what would be your advice to, to, to that kind of person who is never really even taking training and nutrition and supplementation seriously? Like, how can you, how can we offer advice to, to that person that I was maybe 10 or 12 years ago mm. who hadn't even been training long enough to consider the use of anabolic steroids? That is a great question. And I never had to answer that when I was their age. So it, it was when I was 17 and 18 years old, no one took steroids. Like there was where I was from in a small, I just, I wasn't exposed to it. And I didn't have social media. I didn't have bodies to compare to. I had myself. I said, geez, I look amazing. Why would I take anything? I look better than everyone. It was already, and I was 142 pounds. And I thought I looked like a freak because no one else was on steroids. So you didn't have to compare that. But the kids today, they compare their their friends or their favorite social media and they're like, holy shit, Chris Bumstead. Yeah. Like I'm so far from that. And everyone they see, it's so, it's so obvious and apparent. They, they're freaky. They look good. They look amazing. And they have way more access to things. There's SARMs, there's um, um, peptides, steroids, everything they can get. I didn't have access to this. There was no like even internet, like, you know, way back. And so it's, it's hard. And so for anyone that's considering it, unless you are sure you don't do it. Like if you're maybe going to do it, like I'm thinking about doing it, it's always a no. Same as if you want to do a bodybuilding contest. I say, I say the same advice. I'm thinking about doing a show. I'm not sure if I maybe, I'm like, the answer is no, it was easy. Mm -hmm. The only way you should do it is if you're convinced you want to do it. I want to do a bodybuilding contest. I can't wait. I want to take steroids. I've convinced, I've thought about it long enough. I don't want to say no anymore. And so when I said I want to finally take steroids, I was convinced I'm going to take them now. It was not like, well, maybe I will, maybe I not. It took me several years to get to the point of thinking about it to actually doing it. So it's yeah. kind of like a, a slow process. So if somebody just joined the gym and they're young and they're like, oh, I'm thinking about doing it. The answer is no, don't do it. Keep going as long as you can. And one of the reasons that can help people to probably you know stay natural longer is the more muscle you build natural, the more results you'll get later on. Mm -hmm. If I had taken steroids at, at, in my teens or early 20s, mid 20s, I wouldn't have continued to get progress as I became, I only got my pro card at 35. So I was able to keep putting on muscle up till I think when I was around 40 or so, because I started taking steroids at such a, a long, an old age. Yeah. If you start taking steroids like at Chris Bumstead's age, around 18, by the time you're 25, you're pretty much tapped out. You're not going to get any bigger. Mm -hmm. And so Chris Bumstead, he, he's really kind of at the limit. Like he's not going to get that much bigger. He's already grown as much. So he just stays the same every year. He can't make huge improvements. He's already near the top of his weight class yeah. versus... If Chris Bumstead had stayed natural, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, he would have still been getting better and better and better. 25, he'd still be making improvements. And then imagine he decides at 25 to take steroids. Boom, he becomes like, oh my goodness, what happened to Chris Bumstead? He would have already looked ridiculous. He probably would have got a pro card natural, competed as a pro natural and been amazing natural. And then he could have taken, you know, if he wanted to later in life. But it's hard to say, he shouldn't have done it because he's yeah. Mr. Olympia. So theoretical. we're seeing this glaring example of a guy who did so great. And so to tell people don't do it, everyone wants to be like him. Well, not everyone, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's hard to tell people not to, but well, yeah. if do, you're not do, sure, don't, don't do it. Just to flip that on its head, like I said then, when I was in my teens, I dabbled around and played with, with gear. And then I kind of did it the opposite way around. So I played around the stuff just to go on like, holidays and look good and i never actually looked that good because i hadn't really got to grips with training nutrition properly i kind of just went for the quick fix and then i did my first men's physique competition in my early 20s i did that natural and i actually ended up looking better on that natural stage than i did taking gear because i'd really exhausted nutrition training. I had a proper prep coach when I was doing it instead of just fucking around in a gym taking gear. And I suppose that's the, the real example. Like when you really, I mean, obviously I had natural advantages because I'd taken gear previously. And I think that's the other thing to not be mistaken about is that if you've previously taken steroids is always going to be that natural advantage that period that you've had to grow with it but when i did that natural show i definitely looked better because i'd got a lot more serious and focused and committed into what i was doing rather than just looking for a, a kind of quick fix way too early down the line 
Well, I think I think I agree with half of what you said. I think that you definitely can look better natural than enhanced people that are natural. Like I used to compete natural, and I would win overalls against mm -hmm. people who are enhanced. So it doesn't mean you're going to look better. A lot of people just take steroids; they think it's going to burn all this fat and get them ripped. Most guys just look. Most guys just look really good if they get leaner. Most guys are just overweight or they bulk too much. And so if you look, if you're lean enough, you have some abs, you're probably going to look really good, which doesn't require steroids at all. If you take steroids and you go from 200 pounds chubby to 225 pounds chubby, you don't really yeah. have that look that you're looking for. So it comes mostly to diet. But the, far, the part I disagree with is if you take steroids and then stop and you have that natural advantage – mentally or for for your own body i find that it's a disadvantage because you've then seen yourself get big yeah and then you have to stop so once you've done a cycle and you put on 15 pounds of muscle and you stop then you lose your testosterone levels they go down you lose all this muscle and it's very hard mentally to handle your body so like when i would do a cycle and then i would stop i would not gain any weight let's say i'm 190 pounds ripped and then I'm I'm still 190 pounds, but now I'm not ripped anymore. Now I'm getting fat and losing some of my abs, and then because the muscles are getting smaller and you're replacing it with fat. So if once you've taken steroids, it's hard to stop. It can get addicted because you don't want to lose that look. You take steroids, you look bigger, better, stronger, and then you take them away. You lose the strength, you lose the size, and you're like, well, this sucks. And your sex drive goes down. A lot of guys are impotent, they can't have sex, and it's like the whole point was they they wanted to have better bodies so that they could meet somebody have a relationship and then they're like i can't even have sex i my my downstairs doesn't yeah. work so you get all kinds of problems and so i'm like it's better to not start in the first place because once you've had a taste of what the steroids can do it's very difficult to stop it's not like it's an addiction but yeah. it's addictive to want to look that look way. Certain way with the so with the use of steroids there's obviously using them and using them well which i believe what you do and then there's, I guess, like abusing steroid use and overdoing it to that sense because, I mean, I can't even remember their names, but there's people who have died in the fitness industry quite young and they said from heart attacks or whatever it is, but they have obviously been abusing steroids for so long, which I do believe why they do have like a really bad name as well. Probably from myself who is quite naive about the whole thing. Like I believe that's why they have a quite a bad name. But for those people who are, abusing it men and women what are actually like the negative side effects for those people if they're just completely like completely overdoing what they should be doing well first of all i like to say that to, in my opinion any use of steroids that's not prescribed by your doctor is an abusive one mm -hmm. like if you're just taking it in secret out of the blue for whatever at whatever dose to me that's abusive my dose of 140 milligrams which is prescribed by a doctor that's deemed to be trt if i just say well i'm just going to bump it up to 250 milligrams that's not that much that's still abusive it's not much but it's more than i'm supposed to take and so those effects they are cumulative over several years and decades and so i abuse steroids for 10 years so that doesn't mean that just because i'm alive now and my blood work is well now that doesn't mean that it didn't shorten my life maybe at 60 70 80 maybe I'll have a heart attack or something like that at that point of which maybe I would live to be 98 or 100 like you don't know. And so a lot of times the problems with steroids is we're taking them and we don't see the damage because it's in the inside. All we see is the outside. We see the muscles, the abs, the you look great, you feel great and it's like you don't know that the damage is being done. You don't see your arteries. You don't see like what's going on on the inside. And so these damages that you're doing to your body don't happen for years later. So to me, taking steroids is no different than somebody who drinks alcohol. Um, you know, if you do too much of it or recreational drugs, whatever drug you're doing, if you're, if you're doing it over the course of many years, it can have damage to your body. And so what are some of the negative side effects? Well, you could get a heart attack, high blood pressure. It's basically it can lead to problems down the road. It's not like side effects that you see. I mean, you can see the acne and the impotence and, and things like that, but mm. the real problems is what is it doing to your health down the road, to your kidneys, your liver, um, your heart, those kind of things. That's what you, and like, it's kind of like the silent killer, like high blood pressure. That's what's really going on. You're taking steroids and most people are not getting the blood work to see what's going on. And even if you do get your blood work, you don't know exactly what's going on. It, it gives you a, uh, an outline of what could be happening but you just don't know and so the problem is it's 10 20 30 years later that you're going to really find out what you what you did to yourself mm. yeah that's what she's so interesting i think one of the the really good things about your channel greg and the things that you talk about and 
why you've become such a uh, big figure in the YouTube world for it, which I really appreciate is obviously your honesty. But I think the thing with your experience, I think it wasn't too long ago that did you lose your Instagram account? Yes, it yeah. was down for a couple of days. Was that was that due to uh, like issue with cancel culture? Or was that just a technical? Sometimes I, I've had problems for a while and I got banned on TikTok. TikTok would be more cancel cultured. Instagram, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, TikTok, I got canceled three different times because people didn't like one of my videos. Something about a gas station, yeah. the gas station video I did where I, I was defending a guy who was being made fun of by a woman who said that a guy went and hit on her at the gas station. You know, it was that's the premise of the video, mm -hmm. but they just didn't like it. And so they report every single one of your videos as being like harassment, bullying, um, sexual, blah, blah, blah. And so they took my account three times down. So that would be like a cancel culture yeah. for TikTok. Do you think, especially for your YouTube experience, do you think this this kind of phenomenon is something that's got, got worse as, as time's gone on? Because you, you see a lot through different people getting canceled on social media that, people's opinions are being suppressed and people can't have any real say anymore or almost scared to say anything at all because they feel that they're gonna have to deal with the backlash of of other people but you're still someone who's i think being able to to be a, a kind of light in that sphere because you think you've always been honest and i think that's why as you said before honesty is always the best po policy because if you say what you believe from the start you can never really be cancelled because you never really go against what you started out saying, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I'm not really worried about what people think. It's more like governments and things. Yeah. Like, just think of like that the, we're being canceled. Like, we can't, like COVID-19. I couldn't say that word in a video for a year because it would get, the video would get demonetized, not pushed through the algorithm. And so I started saying, you know, the cove. Oh, we're, we're getting secret words or you couldn't say vaccine. I type well, vax, like we, we were well it's still to this day be happening like you you have all this um people trying to prevent you from being open and saying different things like even in canada we have bill c11 which is they're trying to prevent us from having content that they don't view first and saying it's canadian enough mm -hmm. so if i make a video and it's not canadian enough it doesn't get shown on youtube as much imagine that so that's literally going to be voted on soon and so i've done videos about that it's kind of like other countries china they have certain uh youtube's banned in china so i have another account called billy bing i think it's called because in china they can't be showing my youtube videos because well that would be bad yeah. and so like literally different countries have different rules and regulations on what they allow or like having a vaccine shark card for covid or not being allowed to travel on a plane or having to be forced to wear a mask for something that like the whole i'm more worried about the government of the world being able to control everyone and not having any freedom. That's more my concern than if I say I'm on steroids and somebody doesn't like it. Like to me, it's like, yeah. I don't care what you think. I just care about being controlled by, I don't know, the government powers. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't there some, something new to do with like Canadian law or, or YouTube legislation that came in recently? Yeah, B Bill C-11, they're voting on that because they're saying that we have to have content deemed Canadian enough and they would review my videos and say, well, you didn't speak about Canadians in this video and you talked about this and so this is bad. Like in China, they can't show certain movies because they, they like what was the, the Top Gun, the newest Top yeah. Gun movie, they couldn't show it there because they had a scene that then they're saying, well, who's that enemy? And it's like, they prevent many of the famous movies from being shown in certain countries because the government decided, hmm, we don't like what they said in that movie. There's an Eiffel Tower there. We don't like that message. So you can't see Spider-Man or whatever because that that scene is too much for a country. That scares me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... that's... Yeah, so you, we're talking yeah, about... So that's the freedom that I'm scared of having yeah. shown. Like yes, when they say, when they make too many rules and, and just, you know, you can't... Freedom of speech to me is important. Somebody should be allowed to say whatever they want, whether you agree with them or not. That's cool. Like somebody says, makes a video and says, I hate you, Greg Doucette. You are a complete asshole. To me, that's totally fair game. You can say all that. Like, I have no problem with people voicing their opinion because if you start saying what, what people are allowed to say or not say, then where does that end? Mm. Yeah, well, that, that was one of the big debates that came up a few years ago, wasn't it, with Jordan Peterson when he was talking about... Obviously, you can tell people you can't say this because it's against... But you can't force people what to say, which, again, sounds kind of... It's going down that route with the whole 
new bill that's come up to do with YouTube. But yeah, exactly. Like Jordan Peterson's from Canada as well. And so if, if, if they start seeing what we can or can't say, then that's a huge problem because as soon as you're prevented from saying what you're going to say, you're, everything gets skewed to one side. Like if you can only say nice things about your country and not bad things, that like if I have to, if I say, can I hate it, gas prices are too high or something. And they say, oh, that's not very Canadian of him. We can't say that. And then only the videos were saying, we love Canada. It's so amazing in Canada. I love it. Then if those get videos get shown, then the people around the world will think, wow, everyone in Canada loves Canada so much. There's no problems in Canada, but it gets skewed to one side versus the other versus if you allow everyone to say what they think then that has that balance and that's fair. And so as soon as you start stifling certain content, to me, that's just where the whole world can go to shits because you need to have the right to speak out and say what you think. Yeah, 100%. Very bold, big question. Should steroids be legal? I personally think that steroids should be legal. I do. They're, they're legal in other countries. And in, in Canada, for example, we just legalized, well, not just, it's been three, three years, legalized marijuana. Look at the years, uh, 100 years ago, prohibition, no alcohol. I think that people need to be allowed to do what they're going to do. Now, I don't think that you should be allowed to get steroids as a 16-year-old going in, but I think that it should be legal. And I think that you should have this with the advice of a doctor, mm -hmm. but people should be allowed to make their own decisions. And so it, in Canada, steroids, steroids is a class four drug, and I think that you should be allowed to use it. And I don't think that that would be bad. I think that people would then have the opportunity to go and buy legal steroids that are not made in somebody's kitchen. You know what I mean? That would be regulated and it would be adjusted. It would be a lot safer than the problems because steroids can be, if you make it at home and you make it the wrong way and you inject it, it can be more dangerous. Obviously, it's not mm -hmm. gonna, the, the proper, like it has to be, made correctly and so if, if it's legal and and sold it's a lot safer yeah i think there's some massive benefits from this in portugal as well but we really really appreciate your your time today greg and jumping on the podcast i'm sure it's gonna be very beneficial for a so lot of our listeners who, who came in with a lot of questions today for you as well where can people find more of yourself and more of your content just type in greg Doucette. <laughs> YouTube or Instagram, I'm all over. If you type Greg Doucette anywhere on YouTube, then you'll be all set. Amazing. So thank you so much, guys, listening on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and tag Greg in the podcast as well so he can see it. And yeah, thank you so much again. It was amazing. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Cheers, Greg. Bye, guys.